with innovators and entrepreneurs in Colombia and around the world. And I get to see what the future will look like before it's even arrived. And this isn't working. <laughs> you would have the technology not work for the technology talk, right? <laughs> so how many of you have heard of the Hyperloop? No? One, two? I can't really see you out in the audience. But the Hyperloop is Elon Musk's newest invention, innovation. When I first heard of the Hyperloop a couple of years back, I was pretty amazed and I never really thought that I would see it in my lifetime. Elon Musk proposes to put people in these pressurized capsules and send them from the east coast to the west coast in 45 minutes at a distance, I mean, at a rate of 1,200 kilometers per hour. And as I said when I first heard about it around four years back, I couldn't believe it. And I was quite surprised when I read in El Tiempo a couple of months ago that there's building tunnels in New York and that the, the, the pilot programs already have the Hyperloop running at 400 kilometers per hour. But would any of this surprise you? You, <laughs> we're having trouble here. You of all the generations have had the privilege of living in an, exp an age of exponential change. In an age where more technologies have come on board onto our lives than in all of history. Yep. So if you see the graph there, you can see all the things that you've had the privilege of seeing. When I was in high school, we used to use this black apparatus on the left-hand side, which was a telephone. And we never even dreamed of having something called a cell phone. And for you, this has become just something you take for granted. And if you combine cell phones with previous technologies such as the GPS and maps, you have new technologies such as Waze. So what has made this age so incredible is that we not only have new technologies coming into our lives, but that in fact combined with old technologies, we're seeing the growth of new things we never even imagined could exist, such as the Hyperloop. This is just an example of some of the things that I've been looking at in the last couple of years. This down here is a self-driving car made with 3D printers. It's the perfect, this one over here is a self-driving taxi. And you think, wow, is this really good? Yes, you will be seeing this in the next five years. On the road, people using it. And what's so fascinating about the self-driving car, print, printed out with 3D printers, is that it combines 3D printing technologies with many others to create new products and services. And that is why we call it the age of exponential change. I work for Connect Bogota. Connect is an organization created by 24 universities and private corporations with the goal of accelerating innovation and entrepreneurship in Bogota. We help a lot of innovators, young entrepreneurs such as yourselves, to create new products and services to make the world a better place. I'd like to show you some of the examples of inventors and innovators that we help and that I will be judging in History Channel's program, Una Idea Para Cambiar El Mundo, that will be coming up later on this year. Estos son algunos de los semifinalistas de la cuarta edición de Una Idea. Mi idea es erradicar los mosquitos sin contaminar. Mi idea es hacer una prueba rápida y económica para detectar enfermedades de transmisión sexual. Mi idea es generar agua potable a partir del aire. Mi idea es implementar la robótica en las terapias de rehabilitación. Mi idea es mejorar las instalaciones sanitarias en zonas de escasos recursos. So as I mentioned before, these wonderful young people are changing our lives. And before I get into other um, stories, I'd like to first tell you some of the things that you're already seeing in your lives that you might not even know exist, but also some of the changes that you'll be seeing within your lifetimes. The first technology I'd like to talk to you about is augmented reality. 
For many of you, augmented reality is a reality in programs you see, such as Black Mirror. But in, and, and this technology, what it involves is the printing of computer images onto your real life. And you wonder, well, what in the world would I use something like that for? And I'd like to just give you an example. I was searching through the internet and found an example that actually relates to my life. I have to have blood drawn frequently, and they can't find my veins. So just look at what augmented reality will do for me in a couple of years. Oops. So I welcome this and many more things. Virtual reality. My kids are big gamers, and I'm sure some of you have had the privilege already of buying the newest games with virtual reality incorporated. Virtual reality is not only for gaming. It's going to be the most disruptive technology used in education in the next few years. It will also be incredible for bridging cross, I mean for bridging cultural divides, for letting us be able to experience and see places in the world that otherwise we would never have access to. <clears throat> Advanced production systems will mean that we will be able to produce anything anywhere in the world. Solar energy, for example, already is a being able to be scaled all over the world in ways that we never even imagined for those of us who, like Adriana, have always dreamed of having solar energy be the most common energy that we use. Solar energy already is cheaper in the world than in, in 30 countries than coal, for example. And this is it we're able to do because of advanced production systems. Okay, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is a technology which is already existing in your lives and many of the systems that power um, databases, that power um, banking, that power marketing. It implies that computers are programmed in such a way that they can think for themselves. And this is a photograph of Sophia, which is a robot, believe it or not, which was actually granted the nationality by Saudi Arabia. <laughs> and that, um, you know, it's incredible. They take her to fairs all over the world and she thinks for herself. And you think this is crazy, but I'll, I'll later on talk to you about artificial intelligence and what it means for us in different fields. Food produced by 3D printers. Um, I, I was talking about how to reduce the pressure on our ecosystems. Well, this is a way I find it to be pretty gross, but yes, some of you vegetarians will be able to eat 3D printed food very shortly. So what does this all mean for us? What does it mean for my children and for you? I don't know if you realize that even the jobs you will have in the future will be different. A, a recent study that I read by the World Economic Forum says that 65% of jobs that elementary ch school children will have don't even exist yet. So how many of you want to be lawyers? I don't see a big show of hands, but usually in an auditorium. So you do have lawyers. 40% of all legal jobs will be automated in the next 10 years. So that got me to thinking, well, what's going to be of my children and their lives and their careers? What will they be working on in the future? These are some of the careers that you, your friends will be working in. And they seem pretty far out, but they will be a reality. So, as I mentioned previously, I work in Connect Bogota and I run around a lot of people that think that coding is an essential language, as important as English is. So you can imagine, you saw the slide before about what mothers do. I have been trying to pressure my children into learning coding. 
And my children love science and they love people, but they do not see themselves coding in their lives. So I even bribed them in exchange for pets and some reptiles to go to coding camp last year. And they came home and they said, forget it, mom, we hate coding. So that got me to thinking, is the world going to be for geeks and techies? Are my children in trouble because they don't necessarily like coding, at least not for now? And the good news was that I started researching and found that in fact, yes, code, coders and data scientists will be very important in life, but there is a huge role for liberal arts education and for people who do a lot of things that are not necessarily related to technology. And I'll show you why. The most important thing that we can do in our lives is to be able to understand information and apply it in ways that can transform the world in positive ways. These are some of the skills that you will need to develop in your lives and some of the questions you will need to ask. Are you able to solve the great problems of the world? Are you able to sift through all that information and really understand what's relevant or not? Are you able to build the products and the services that meet human needs best? best? Sandy Pentland out of the MIT Media Lab, which is one of the labs that produces most innovations in MIT, for example, says that what's important isn't what's in between your ears, meaning your brain, but rather how you relate to people. So skills will change. And definitely strategic thinking and critical thinking skills will be important. These are some of the skills that people who study this think will be most important. And if you see, a lot of them have to do with people management, with teamwork, with negotiation, with cognitive flexibility. So the good news for my children is that at least I hope that the skills they already have and have a potential for will have a great role in our society. And of course, I also hope they'll learn how to code someday. But that's beside the point. So one of the reasons why I we started thinking about what would be of my children in an age of artificial intelligence has to do with a robot that I ran into a couple of years ago that IBM presented to me called Watson. And well, I don't know how many of you have heard of Watson. Um, and I got particularly interested because my oldest son, who's also in the auditorium, decided to study medicine. And I heard the president of IBM one time say that Watson, as a first year medical student, had combed through 42 journals, 2 million pages of medical records, um, millions and millions of documents, and had come up with a better diagnosis and a better cure for a leukemia patient than the best doctors at Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. So I started thinking, well, what is Mateo going to do with his life with all these computers? And he had an interesting take on the subject. He said to me, well, mom, maybe we need to go back and to be human. We need to go back to do what doctors should always have done from the beginning, which is to look patients in the eyes and help prevent. And I thought that was a pretty interesting take. Finally, before I leave, I'd like to um, show you one last video and make a last reflection. Uh, as connect, part of Connect Bogota, we get to meet a lot of really interesting people. And one of the people that has most inspired me is Carlos Torres. Carlos Torres was meant to be a rural teacher in Boyacá. And he used to tinker and play with objects so much that his mother convinced him to enroll at the National University in design school. And Carlos went on to win a worldwide competition to build a car of the future. And I'd like to show you what his latest invention is.
boy and of many others with his invention. So before I leave you, I'd like to make one last reflection, and that's that technology will come into our lives and we have a possibility of putting it to good use or not. And this possibility largely depends on you. As Tom Chatfield sa has said, somebody who studied this issue a long time, our creations are certain to grow far beyond our current comprehension. How far and how fast is perhaps our most urgent existential question. Our best hopes of progress, however, remain deceptively familiar. Understanding ourselves better, asking what aims may serve not only our survival, but also our thriving, and striving to build systems that serve rather than subvert these. As a final reflection, I'd like to tell you that as you leave school, many of you who will be graduating in the near future, you will chart a course, and the probabilities that you will stray off that course will be large. There will be a lot of uncertainty in your lifetimes. Technology, however, will be very certain. It will be a large part of your lives. <laughs> we have the possibility of putting that technology to good use, to changing lives for the better, your communities, and for helping to reinvent ourselves as humans by using technology in a good way. So I challenge all of you to use technology for things that will transform the world in positive ways and for helping us to do something only humans can do, which is to share, to care, and to love. Thank you very much. <laughs>